Scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory are developing a forensic technology that uses the proteins found in human hair to identify people and evidence. It will be used in the same way the DNA is used in crime scene analysis. So one of the things that we got really interested in and also some of the gaps that existed in the community that we support, which is law enforcement primarily in the forensic community, the broader forensic community, is uh, this reliance on subjective methodology and was there a, 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 an alternative or, a, or a, an additional method to DNA that would allow for um, a very science-based, statistically valid uh, methodology for human identification, but they didn't rely on DNA. Hairs and fibers have been used um, in forensic uh, comparisons, but that again falls back on some more subjective methodologies where you're making observations rather than, than technical measurements, scientific measurements. And so what, what we've done is we've uh, developed a method that utilizes the protein that's contained within the hair shaft itself to, uh, to give us detailed information about a, about a human, a specific individual, and enable uh, science-based comparisons between pieces of evidence. Using our current uh, sample sizes, uh, we're able to get enough markers so we can get a unique pattern for an individual that would distinguish them uniquely among a population of one million. And what we would like to do is to be able to get that degree of discrimination from a single hair. We're not quite there yet, but we think a combination of uh, improvements in, in, uh, in sample processing and also improvements in our instrumentation method. People sort of light up and they get excited about it because this is a novel approach. It's sort of what we call orthogonal to other established methods. And so it, uh, you know, could expand and solve some of the uh, problems that are currently there in the forensic science field. How to deal with mixed DNA samples or uh, forensic samples where many contributors are there. Uh, how to deal with hair, which doesn't have a lot of DNA in it except for mitochondrial DNA how to deal with uh, forensic samples that might be compromised. They've been in the environment too long, the DNA is broken down. So with all of these factors, you know, it's harder and harder to extract the DNA-based uh, information. And so what we're doing is another tool, and it just extends, maybe even just a little way, extends what we can actually extract, the information we can extract out of that individual. So right now we're really in research mode, and so when we do analysis of hairs, it probably takes us a total of two days. And so that involves processing the sample, applying it to the instrument, doing the data analysis, and then doing the statistics on the end. Um, we are working on methods to make this much more streamlined. And so once it goes out of dis the discovery mode in the lab, we're going to work on methods that make it much more routine so it can now be used routinely in uh, forensic labs um, that may not have kind of a state-of-the-art instrument we have, but it can be adapted to, to instruments that are commonly found in crime labs. Amazing effort that could only have happened when we had a team here together and all playing and having a different role. And that's one reason why uh, Lawrence Livermore is perhaps, you know, the best place for moving this forward and developing this idea. Mm -hmm.